Hey guys, welcome to Vlogtober. I'm gonna try my best to vlog every day in October. Um, this is October 1st, so you'll be getting the first video on October 2nd, sorry about that. Um, and today we are going to pick ourselves up and work on our recovery and try to be a better human being. It's about 8 a.m. right now. I've already been up for a while. The dogs and I went for a mindfulness walk this morning, which was really lovely. The weather is super nice. It's starting to become fall in Arkansas, which is my absolute favorite time of year. I love spooky season and I love the beauty around here when the leaves start to change. And to celebrate, I got us some Door County coffees to try. I got the fall sampler pack and I will link to this down below in the description box. If you want to get this for yourself, I would highly recommend getting it from Amazon um, because you can get free shipping. If you get it on their website, the shipping cost is outrageous. It was like $20 or something. So I guess we're going to start with the first one in the box, the Wisconsin Harvest Blend. Medium roast coffee celebrating the fall season with hints of roasted chestnuts and toasted pralines. Okay, I just poured it all in and I realized that each one of these packages is made for a pot of coffee, but it's made actually for a large coffee maker, not like my small little five cup. So this is gonna be super strong, but I like my coffee strong. Pouring in the water all the way up to the top. And let's brew, baby. Morty's over there eating his brekkie. He gets a mouthful of food from the bowl and then he takes it over here and eats it. And then he goes back and gets another mouthful. Don't you babies? Don't you, my little babies? Yes, you do. So while I'm waiting on my coffee to brew, then the next thing I do in the morning is come over to my desk and start setting up to start my journaling. I do mindfulness journaling every day. Well, I won't call it mindfulness journaling. I just kind of tacked that word on there. I've been journaling every day for over a year, um, but it is part of my mindfulness exercises as well. So I'm gonna check in my magical almanac to see what the color of the day is and the incense of the day. And today, Color of the day is amber and incense is juniper. You can see that there. If you're interested in this magical almanac, I have this linked in the description box below as well. It also tells you the moon. It is waning Taurus today. That's my sign. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a pen that's in the color of the day out of my journal pens to write in today, just a way, kind of a way that I connect with the energy of the day. So these are my journaling pens that a subscriber bought me and I use them every single day. I freaking love them. I will also link to these if you wanna check them out. One thing that I really love about them is that they have refills, y'all. So you can refill your pens and you can even order more of the refills, which I've already refilled several of these because I use them so much. So I'm looking for an amber color, which is kind of like a dark yellow, light orange. And I don't have anything that's exactly the right color, so I'm just gonna use this glitter orange pen. It'll be close enough. And finally, I like to light some incense before I do my journaling. I try to burn the incense of the day. I don't know if I have juniper. So I'm gonna go check. My huge box of incense right here. Um, all different kind of incenses and sometimes I forget which ones I have. So I'm gonna look through here and see what I can find. No juniper, unfortunately, and I recently ran out of my Yule incense that had juniper in it. So uh, what I'm gonna do and what I've been doing is if I don't have the incense of the day, then I'll just burn some kind of seasonal incense. So I have this Maven incense right here that I got on Etsy. Um, from Sacred Mists. I'll link to this down below if you're interested in it. It is some of the best incense I've ever had, especially this Maven. It, it smells so freaking good. It is orchard apples and brown sugar, and it literally smells like, I don't know, apple pie or something. It smells so good. So that's what we're going to burn today to celebrate the fall season, I guess. I really need to clean my desk. I've got incense ash everywhere, but I'm going to put this in my little snail incense holder here. There we go. So then I'll write down the date. It's Sunday, October 1st, 2023. Cannot believe it's already October. The color of the day is amber. Incense is juniper. The moon is waning Taurus. And I also write down how I'm feeling. And today I'm feeling Honestly, I'm feeling sad, but I'm also feeling hopeful about my future. So usually by the time I get all this prepared, my coffee will be done brewing, so I'm gonna go make a cup. Okay, I'm gonna get my coffee cup um, out of the cupboard. And I'm also gonna add my collagen into my coffee. So I use the Vitamin Shop multi-source collagen. Um, I'm 40 years old and my skin looks like this. I don't know if it's the collagen or not. Um, I have no makeup on, obviously I haven't done anything for the day, but you know, 
I'd recommend trying it. Link, it to, link to it in the description box. I honestly have no idea if the collagen helps my skin, but I take it every day anyway. So I just put one scoop of that in my coffee cup. And then I just pour the hot coffee over it and it just melts the collagen. And you don't even, you can't even tell it's in there. Then I'm gonna add a little of my organic half and half. I don't measure, I just pour some in until it looks like the right shade of creamy brown to me. And the last step is to give it a stir with a metal straw. I like to put my coffee on my little coffee warmer and turn it on, that way it stays warm while I'm journaling. And how could I forget, I have to taste the Door County coffee and let you know how it is. So this is their Fall Harvest Bounty, I believe. Oh my God, that is delicious. That is so good. You can definitely taste the praline. It tastes like praline coffee, but it's really good. I would highly recommend, man, I love Door County. And even though it is bright enough in here today, I'm still gonna go ahead and light this candle just because I like the ambiance. If the wick will catch, come on, come on. Burn, baby, burn. All right, hopefully the flame will get bigger when the wick burns down a little bit. Say hi, Skellig. It's your time to shine, my friend. It's been a couple hours um, since I did my journaling. I finished my journaling and it brought up a lot of emotions for me today. And I had some strong emotional reactions that I had to deal with. So I went and did some of my coping skills. Um, I took a bubble bath. Um, I tried, I did some meditations. I calmed myself down. Um, I am going through a lot right now. It's a tough time for me. I feel very sad and heartbroken by the loss of my relationship. Um, so it comes up for me several times during the day and I'm trying to learn to cope with that um, and process those emotions and not do anything drastic or harmful to myself or anyone else. So I definitely want my content going forward to be more positive and I want to focus on the things I'm doing right and not stay down in the dumps and record myself crying and being depressed. I want to focus on the positive things that I'm doing and how I'm moving forward and making progress. So now that I've gotten control of myself again, um, the next thing that I'm gonna do is start working on my BPD workbook for today. So I got this workbook called the Borderline Personality Disorder Workbook, an integrative program to understand and manage your BPD, step-by-step -step guidance to help you balance emotions, improve relationships, challenge negative beliefs, grow beyond your BPD, and reclaim your life by Daniel Fox, PhD. Daniel Fox also has a very good YouTube channel where he makes lots of videos about borderline personality disorder, and he is an expert in the field. And if you're interested in this workbook, I will link to it down below in the description box. I feel like I'm linking so many things today, but they'll, they'll all be down there for you. So I've already been reading through the workbook, um, the beginning part, what is BPD, the little intro and all that and the next section is identifying your BPD symptoms so place a check mark next to any description below that matches how you see the world and how you act and react so I'm gonna go through these and check mine and then I'll let you guys know which ones I chose okay well I I checked every single box um, so let me explain a little bit so the first one is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment so I have absolutely exhibited this trait so many times when I drove 14 hours to see Andrew, when even just now with my most recent ex-boyfriend, when I was frantically like texting him and calling him and trying to get him to talk to me um, because I, I acted in a way that caused him to abandon me and then I frantically tried to repair that and I couldn't, it was too late, but I acted in a way that just pushed him away more. So that is a hallmark symptom of BPD. And so the little example in the workbook says, Betty perceived that her boyfriend was abandoning her because he didn't respond to her gift quickly enough. I, apparently, there's this whole story about Betty here. She left a gift on his doorstep. He didn't respond. She got upset, which drove her to break up with him, causing her to feel even more abandoned. She had a history of inappropriate behavior related to feeling abandoned. And I definitely do. When I feel that somebody is abandoning me, abandoning me I just go insane and act in desperate, needy, frantic ways. 
So that's definitely one of my symptoms. A pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of idealization and devaluation. So this is another thing that I absolutely do. Um, that's black and white thinking. Splitting is another way to put it. Um, another term you may have heard. And I will go between completely putting someone on a pedestal or absolutely detesting them and no in between. Um, so it's that kind of like black and white thinking. And so I idealize my ex-boyfriend and then when he leaves me, I devalue him because how could you leave me? You know, how could you do that to me? You must be a bad person to be able to hurt me. So it's that's an unhealthy behavior, but that's part of the disorder as well. I feel like right now I'm probably idealizing him again um, because all I think about like is how great he is and how wonderful he is and how I screwed everything up. So I think I'm probably in a pattern of idealization right now. And that's something that I need to explore. But let's move on to the next um, symptom. Identity disturbance, markedly and persistently un unstable self-image or sense of self. So that is actually the symptom that made me realize I had BPD because I was struggling so much with my identity disturbance. I don't have a clear sense of self, which means that I value everybody else's opinion to tell me who I am or what I'm worth. And um, also, like when I was in my 30s, I had a really bad problem with not like understanding what I liked as far as style. I would change my style all the time. I would change my hair all the time. I would be somebody completely different. One day I would be punk rock Cindy. The next day I would be like linen wearing hippie Cindy. And I just couldn't figure out who I was. And I still struggle with that. Not as much as I did in my 30s, but I do still struggle with that. But what I struggle with now more is I feel like I've kind of, kind of found my own little style over time. But what I struggle with more is um, the valuing myself by the way other people treat me because I don't have a stable sense of self. So if like my ex-boyfriend broke up with me, that makes me feel like I have no value because he doesn't want me. So I, I'm worthless. You know, that's how, that's how I feel. Th this has been one of the hardest things um, for me to cope with is, and it's hard being a YouTuber as well because of all the comments telling me what a piece of shit I am. And so I start to internalize those and believe them because I don't have a sense of self to stand up and like buffer that and say, I know who I am and your opinions don't matter to me. I take all those opinions and make them myself. So I hope that was a good explanation, but that's definitely something that I really struggle with. All right, next is impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. For example, spending, sex, substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating. So you guys, if you've been watching my vlogs for any amount of time have seen me do almost all of those um, behaviors. I do a lot of impulsive, reckless things, reckless driving, binge eating, having sex with somebody the first time I meet them, spending recklessly. Um, so that's definitely a symptom that I suffer from. Um, I'm incredibly impulsive in my thoughts, in my actions, um, and it's one of the things that's caused the most problems for me in my life. Next is recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures or threats, or self-mutilating behavior. So I have never been a cutter or anything like that, um, but I obviously have threatened suicide numerous times to people. Um, I've used it as a manip manipulation tactic, and I've also done it meaning it, like that I was actually going to do it. I've attempted suicide three times in my life. I was not successful on any of those attempts. Once when I was a teenager and twice as an adult. The rate of suicide in people with BPD is much higher than the rest of the population um, because this disorder is very difficult to live with. The next symptom is affective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. For example, intense episodic dysphoria, irritability, or anxiety, usually lasting a few hours and only rarely more than a few days. This is what my ex-boyfriend called my death starring, is what he called it. So I would get, I would get in these frames of mind, like this mood, and I just couldn't get out of it. I would have an emotional reaction to something and I just could not bring myself down from it. And I would be upset and no matter what anybody could do, I just wouldn't be able to get over it and move on and I would just keep on staying in this, in this state. Irritability, anxiety, just being upset. And it's very difficult for me, once I get to that state, it's very difficult for me to come out of it. And it can last hours. I think my worst episode lasted like 15 hours or something like that. And it's very selfish and it's almost like I'm punishing the other person that I'm with. 
like wanting them to understand how upset I am and like really get it in their head that I'm upset. And it's very selfish behavior, but I definitely do that. And that is another one of the things that causes the most problems for me because I just can't get myself out of that um, hyper emotional state. And my, mo my emotions get really dysregulated and then I just can't, um, I can't get myself out of it. So I used to think that I would say that I was shutting down when I did this because I would just, I would sit there like this. And somebody would say something to me, I would just have a flat effect. I would be like, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm, I'm good. And I would just think that I was shutting down. But what I was really doing is punishing the other person. And it's incredibly selfish. That was the thing that my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend uh, helped me realize that I was doing. Um, he, called it, he called it my death star. Just this increased emotional reactivity that lasts for hours. And uh, it's not fair to the people around you. It's really confusing for them and it's really, really hurtful to them. Next is chronic feelings of emptiness. So I 100% feel chronic feelings of emptiness. A lot of times I feel pain, which is driven by shame and guilt from the things I've done. And the other part of the time, it's empty. Um, you feel like you, there's just a hole inside you that can never be filled. And you just feel emptiness. So also I wanna, I wanna put in right here, um, I should have said this at the beginning, but I am explaining all this from my perspective as someone who has severe untreated borderline personality disorder. This is only my experience of the disorder. Other people may experience it differently, not have all these symptoms, have a different combination of symptoms. You have to have five or more of these symptoms to be um, diagnosed with borderline. Obviously, I have all of them, but you can have it with only five of these. So just because somebody doesn't have emptiness or um, doesn't, you know, do impulsive acts or doesn't threaten suicide, that doesn't mean that they can't still have BPD. So I just want to throw that out there. I'm not trying to like diagnose anybody or anything. I have an official diagnosis um, and I'm just going through my symptoms. Um, this is the beginning of my treatment and getting better. And I just want to um, share the whole process here for anybody who's interested in this or anybody who's also going through the same struggles. But just please keep in mind that everybody experiences it differently. And this is all just from my perspective. Okay, next we have inappropriate intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. For example, frequent displays of temper, constant anger, recurrent physical fights. So I checked this one. I don't get into physical fights or have any kind of physical violence in my life. I do have outbursts of anger that happen when my emotions are dysregulated and I'm not able to control myself. I'm not the kind of person that yells and throws things and stuff like that, but my anger will come out more in like a passive aggressive way. You've probably seen me in live streams act that way. I'll, co I'll come out and I'll make some passive aggressive comment. I'll feel the anger inside me and then I'll feel ashamed for what I'm doing. I'll, I'll do something stupid like run down the road or slam a door. So I definitely have the outburst of anger, but they're not, I'm not like punching people and throwing things and screaming. That's not my way. My way is much more passive, which I mean, I guess is a little better because at least I'm not physically hurting anybody, but it's still mentally like, it's still emotionally abusive to other people, you know. And then the next is transient stress-related paranoid ideation or severe dissociative symptoms. So this one I almost didn't check because I don't have paranoia. I don't have any paranoia ever, but I do have severe dissociation episodes. If I get incredibly stressed and, so actually one of the reasons why I drink alcohol to cope is because I don't dissociate when I drink. If I don't drink, then I will sometimes have dissociative episodes because I have to get away from the pain. Um, and that's just one way that I can do it. And I can't always do it. I have to be at a really high level of stress to be able to do it, but um, I definitely do that at times. So I didn't finish reading that just in case you don't know. Uh, dissociation is mentally separating from physical or emotional experiences or both. So you kind of like leave your body and just completely dissociate from your feelings because the feelings just become too overwhelming and you can't handle it. It's just a coping mechanism that a lot of people with BPD um, learn in childhood or adolescence um, whenever they were going through traumatic situations is just to kind of dissociate 
so you don't have to feel what's happening. You will feel like not yourself, like detached from your body, like you're a puppet is what it says in here. And that's a very good um, description. So the next exercise in the workbook is to figure out at which end of the spectrum you're on. I, I mean, I think I already know that I'm pretty severe, but we're gonna go ahead and do the exercise because I wanna do everything in this workbook. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single exercise in the workbook with you guys because some of this stuff is going to be incredibly personal and take a lot of effort and time on my part but I thought these first few exercises it would be kind of nice to share just so you could get an idea of the kind of things that I'm going to be working on and not only am I working on this on my own with this workbook but um, this is also stuff I'm going to bring to therapy because my therapist actually recommended that I get this workbook and then as I work through it I'm going to bring what I learn about myself or questions I have and stuff like that to my therapy session so we can discuss that more in depth. So frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment, I said extreme, um, a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships, I said severe, um, because I was with one person for 15 years, but still, now that I'm not, you can see how quickly my relationships are deteriorating, so I put severe, um, that may be extreme, I don't know. Some of these were really hard and I had to think about it and change my answers, because sometimes I, it's hard for me to know if I'm severe or extreme, you know? So uh, identity disturbance is extreme. Um, I put severe for impulsivity, but m you know what? Maybe it should be extreme. I don't know. This is hard. This is really hard to sit and try to evaluate yourself on the scale that you really have no reference for. Uh, recurrent suicidal behavior. I put moderate because I don't do that a lot. More than a normal person though, so I put moderate. Um, I put extreme on the effect of instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. That is definitely extreme for me. Um, chronic feelings of emptiness. I at first put moderate um, because I feel like I feel pain most of the time. But then I realize that when I'm not going through a heartbreak, I do feel empty a lot of the time. So I put severe. Um, inappropriate, intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. I put severe. And transient stress-related paranoid ideation. I do not have that but I do have disassociative symptoms occasionally, so I put moderate. Um, so it says, when you look at your responses, where would you put yourself on the BPD spectrum? I put myself somewhere in between severe and extreme. Probably more likely severe, but I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit headed towards extreme. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four extreme answers, or four severe answers. One, two, three extreme answers and two moderates. So yeah, I definitely think I'm more towards the, I'm more towards the severe. I think if I were extreme, I would be like non-functional in life. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm severe. And this is just a self-assessment, obviously. This is nothing official, but just, this just kind of helps you like figure out for yourself where you're starting from, you know? Um, Cause if I have to face my behaviors, what I'm doing, how extreme they are, how I'm doing these things in my everyday life in order for me to be able to stop them. Okay, so now we're getting into the parts that I am not gonna be sharing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this section of the workbook today, and that's what I'm gonna be working on um, this afternoon. Okay, so I finished chapter one, and I'm gonna do one chapter every single day out of this workbook and just work my way methodically through it. And not just sit there and write, but also do the exercises, think about the material, reflect on myself and do what's necessary to change. Now this first chapter is just very introductory, like getting to know your symptoms. I know my own symptoms very well, but I did like that little exercise because I just kind of had to write down the things that I told you guys about the symptoms, like what, what kind of things I do, like it asked, um, why did you rate yourself like extreme or whatever? What do you think you do that put you in the extreme category? And so I had to like really reflect and look at myself and think about um, what behaviors I'm actually doing. So I really found that helpful um, as a tool for self-reflection, which is something I'm not always good at. So the next thing that I'm going to work on today is cleaning. So I've been very depressed over the past week. I have not cleaned very much. I cleaned my kitchen one day and that was it. The rest of the house is a disaster. Um, I'm, I don't want to overwhelm myself because if I think about everything I need to do, then I get overwhelmed. So I'm just going to focus on one thing at a time. And today I'm going to clean the dining room and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the kitchen clean and I'm gonna clean the dining room and that's gonna be my task of cleaning for today. So this is what the dining room looks like right now. It is a bit of a mess. There's clothes everywhere. 
stuff all over the table um, that needs to be put away and cleaned up, boxes that need to be broken down and thrown out, my plants need to be tended to. Um, this is the stuff I want to deal with. Those roses that my ex-boyfriend got me, I have been purposely avoiding those because it's painful for me but I need to um, get rid of those as well. Uh, first, I am going to clean up my kitchen, which it's not that dirty I, because I haven't really cooked or anything in here since I cleaned it, um, but I need to, there's some dishes in the sink, so I'm gonna unload the dishwasher and reload it with the dirty dishes and just put away this little bit of clutter here. Okay, I got the kitchen clean, dishes are washing, so I accomplished something today. I'm leaving this box here because this is the box I put my camera on when I'm filming in the kitchen and I don't think it looks too messy. So I'm keeping the kitchen clean, that is my priority. Second priority, cleaning up the dining room today. I'm going to get this done, it's a mess. I don't look forward to going through all this stuff, there's a lot of mail and I don't want to deal with these roses, but I'm going to do it. cleaned off and everything cleaned up. Morty's down here squeaking away with his toy. The only thing I still have to do is deal with these roses and my plant. I'm gonna do the roses last. It's just emotional for me. The first time like a guy bought me flowers unprovoked and it really meant a lot to me and I don't want to get rid of them really but I also feel like I kind of need to you know. So my plants um a lot of them are dying. I've been doing a very bad job caring for my plants because I've been very depressed. Um, my lemon balm is dead. My aloe is still doing well. This Dracaena, it's got a couple brown leaves and it desperately needs to be watered. I don't know how this thing is still alive, honestly. I'll water it and see if I can keep it alive until I can get it repotted, but I think the begonia is dead. Also, all my sea monkeys are dead, so we need to deal with that. So I just want to say I'm going to be documenting my recovery process and what that looks like, and it's not always going to be pretty. But I want these videos to be positive, but I also want to show the downsides, but also how I'm recovering from them in a positive way. So as I was talking about the roses there, I just had a bit of a hyper-emotional reaction. So uh, my instinct was I wanted to try to contact my ex-boyfriend I wanted to reach out to him. I wanted to get comfort from him. I wanted to get my emotional needs met from him, but I didn't do it. Instead, I used some of my skills, um, putting water on my face, sitting down on the floor with my legs up on the wall is another one that I do, breathing, calming myself down, trying to regulate my emotions and not do anything that would hurt somebody else, like bothering him when he obviously does not want to talk to me. So. I managed to get through that. It was not easy. Um, it was really hard to fight off that instinct because I desperately want emotional comfort right now and it's hard. Um, I need, I want validation right now. I'm gonna cry again, sorry. I'm trying not to cry in these vlogs if I can help it. Um, I want validation, I want comfort, I want to feel like somebody cares about me and it's hard um, to try and find that in myself. I, I can't right now. I don't find it in myself. Um, the only thing I do is just push through right now. And I feel like that's still progress. I'm working on be, being able to give it to myself, but I can't yet. I'm not there yet, but we're gonna push through and we're not gonna, we're not gonna put that on to another person. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm bringing these poor sad plants over to the sink so I can water them. I'm gonna use my sink sprayer here. This one especially is so dry and I am just gonna soak it. Actually, I need to take it out of that pot. Oh my God, look how dry that is. I am just gonna soak this thing down and give it so much water and let it sit here and drink, y'all. All right, so my aloe, I'm just gonna 
give it, it's not too bad. I have been watering it and Ella doesn't need that much water because it's a succulent. But I'm gonna give it a little bit of water just because it's been a while since it's had a really good watering. All right, and I'm gonna let these sit here in the sink and drain. All right, I also brought this little one over to give it some water. I cannot believe this thing is still alive. What a hardy plant, man. I am gonna be repotting this soon. We'll do it in a vlog. I'm sad that I let my begonia die, but you know, um, I've been dealing with a lot of shit, so I'm trying to get caught up on taking care of everything now. So the poor lemon balm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to trash it. I don't think there's any coming back from that, and I'll use this pot to plant to repot that other pot plant. Uh, the begonia, I think it's done for. I think we're gonna have to throw her out. I cannot believe this. There is still one sea monkey in there swimming around. Do you see him? How is he alive? I haven't put any food in there in so long. Let's feed him. There you go, little guy. I guess I'll just keep this one little sea monkey. Um, that's a lot of food for you, buddy. Good luck. Well, I'm happy with the progress I made today. I got the dining room cleaned up. I could not deal with the roses. Um, I can't do it today. I'm gonna do it, but I, I couldn't do it today. So I'm happy with the progress that I made today. I've had um, a lot of ups and downs today. Um, it's just been me in my apartment trying to deal and I have resisted the urge to try and reach out to my ex-boyfriend. Um, I desperately want emotional validation right now and I'm struggling with that, but I am using all of the skills in my toolbox that I possibly can to fight that urge and to try and soothe myself and get myself through this. I'm working on myself as much as I possibly can. I'm trying to do things like clean. I got the dining room done today, got the dishes washed, been taking care of the dogs. Um, the only other things I need to address are eating. So I ate a little piece of sausage this morning and that's all I had. Um, I am feeling hungry right now though, so I'm going to make sure that I eat a proper dinner even if I have to order it from DoorDash and force myself to eat it. I'm going to do that. Every day I'm going to try to get better at eating. It's just right now my heart hurts a lot and it's kind of hard to eat. But I am making a conscious effort to improve and eat more. And the other thing I want to address is my drinking. I am going to try um, to not drink tonight. I know this is going to be an incredibly painful night for me because I use alcohol to numb the pain that I feel and I'm almost <laughs> welling up now and dreading just thinking of going through the night without drinking but I am going to commit to doing that and I will let you know tomorrow if I was able to do it. I know this has kind of been a depressing first vlog of vlogtober but also I want it to be positive because I did make positive progress today and I'm not even done making progress because instead of drinking what I'm going to do all night is to watch videos on YouTube about healing trauma and uh, maybe read some things just self-help self-help all the time that's all I'm, that's all I'm doing that's I'm just pouring my whole soul into it um, and continuing to use my skills to um, soothe myself and not reach out to other people um well, not, you know, I can reach out to other people, friends and stuff, but, you know, not bother my ex and try to get him to fill my emotional need and think about what he needs, which is space for me. And like I said, I am in the baby stages of healing and recovery, and I'm just trying to do my best. I'm going to continue sharing my journey, so make sure to subscribe if that's something you want to see. And um, I will see you guys in day two of Vlogtober. We are going to do more in Vlogtober than just me being in my apartment cleaning one room and doing... BPD workbooks like we're gonna do more than that like some fall themed vlogs and some crafts and stuff for us to do so but I'm still gonna be focusing on my recovery as well and every day I'm gonna try to accomplish something so thank you guys so much for watching I truly appreciate it and I will see you in the next one bye